I'm Van Hartman. I teach at Manhattanville College. I'm a professor of English, and I teach poetry, uh, uh, literature uh, in general, and uh, film studies. And I'm going to read, uh, to start with, a poem called Shiva Dancing from my first collection of poetry called Shiva Dancing. Uh, this poem was written after the events of 9-11, but uh, those events had a uh, different effect on me perhaps than some other people because my own wife had passed away of stomach cancer just a uh, year earlier than that. And uh, in my mind, the issue of grieving and uh, the yearning for the presence of what you've lost uh, from the two events merged. And I chose Shiva dancing, which could also be pronounced Shiva dancing, because my, my wife was Jewish, and so I thought of sitting Shiva. But I also was thinking about the Hindu god Shiva and the idea of destruction and creation. And so that's the background of the poem. Our plane slid down the Hudson at the mouth banked east, its shadow traversing Manhattan, shrinking, expanding, breaking into fragments on roofs and sides of buildings, then settled on a crevice where it seemed a tooth had been extracted from the city's jaw. A year before, the wreckage still exhaled an acrid breath Smoke and ash and swirling cells spun a savage dance. Air was thick with supplication for one more gasp, touch, chance to ask forgiveness. Mingled whispers, muted howls rose in dark plumes from the hollow throat. Now from half a mile above, I gawked dumbly at the remnants of their passion. At LaGuardia, baggage, bustle, and braces brushed away the shadow that briefly touched their dust. You weren't there to greet me, having passed through your own catastrophe a full year earlier than theirs. I knew that time was slipping forward, the present pressing on the past, relentless, indifferent, like Merrill's torn-up block, the massive volume of the world closing shut again, even on our grief. Now more years have crumbled, I strain to see your face through the ash and dust that you have become. It was springtime, that morning you lay dying. A college festival outside our window brought a brightly colored balloon filled with heat that rose and fell in a nearby field. Shadows danced across the grass from laughing students a hundred feet above the ground. You had had a dying night, shredded lungs and ragged breath subsiding to a silent fever. You wanted water desperately, but had no voice to ask. The morning clouded up and rained, which stilled the balloon, but did you little good. I wet a cloth, laid it on your forehead, squeezed moisture from a dropper to clear your clouding eyes, soaked a sponge-tipped stick, swabbed your mouth, and talked to keep you tethered to the earth. It was the sponge that held you. On that, you wrapped your tongue and clamped your teeth so tight I had to use some strength to extract it. You clung to water at the end. I left the room for one brief chore. You drifted free. When I returned, your face was bent to where I'd sat. Red-laced saliva slid along the pillow. A single tear wet your cheek. Your fleeing molecules left a hole that lay agape. Dark matter whispered into my nights. I took to sleeping in the space you left behind, trying to use my bulk to hold ajar the door through which you departed. But inexorably, it closes. Who can build a monument sufficient to what we want? The breath of their desire? The grip of teeth on moistened sponges? Instead, we're left to imagine them from shadows left behind. We'd like to think they've mingled in a graceful minuet with those whose anguish came before and after. We'd like to think they fill a universe of particles that gyrate in counterpoint to ours. We try to picture Shiva 
dancing madly in love with them, tossing their fragments about the heavens, preparing them for our reunion. But we move on to others who embrace us at airports, help rebuild our homes. What is this tale I'm telling you who have no ears to hear? A slim wedge I've set against the volume of the world, a little dance of images, a fragile house of words.